Due to a quote from Sigmund Freud and the topic of self-harm, this video is not intended for children and viewer discretion is advised. In the much-anticipated conclusion of the rise of Kylo Ren, we see Ben Solo become the man Sidious wanted him to be. Two of Ben's peers at Luke's Jedi Academy, Ty and Vo, find Ben through the Force and see him with the Knights of Ren on the Mind Moon of Mimban. Ty, a young Padawan of which Ben shares a connection, pleads for Ben to turn back to the light and offers him hope. There's hope. There's always hope. You can start from wherever you are. No path is forever. Despite what many think, Ben never strayed too far from redemption. No sin was great enough to burn the bridge to the journey home. Unfortunately, Ren, the leader of the Knights, kills Ty before Ben can respond. Ben confronts Ren, and despite several pleas from the Force, he listens to the voices of the Dark that urge him to kill and take Ren's place as master. Ben kills him, and goes on to mercilessly kill the other Padawan, Vo. The panel shows the main confrontation taking place on a bridge, surrounded by pillars of what appear to be crystals, blazing orange and red from fire swirling below. This is the color of the Sith. It is a bridge of choices that Ben made that day. As Ty reminds Ben, you're acting like you don't have control, when every single step is your own choice. Ben Solo was on a quest to find his true self. He felt the pressure of expectations. Voices in his head from the dark told him of his destiny on the dark side. Voices of his family and friends told him of his destiny to be the chosen one, like his grandfather before him. These crossroads allowed Ben to pave his own path. However, the bridges lay ever before him. That is the lesson of Ben Solo. Bridges. Bridges that go in two directions. On that red bridge, Ben takes the step to become Kylo Ren. After he murders Vo, and the Knights of Ren acknowledge their new master, he goes into a private room and bleeds his kyber crystal in his left hand. He bled his crystal, which became cracked in the process. His hand drips with his own blood. His choice has been made. He did the deed. Blood had been spilled and he covered himself with guilt. Ben hated himself. He bled that crystal due to self-hatred. He crushed that crystal to crush his spirit. His saber, though contained by the hilt, spit uncontrollable venom. Kylo would thrash out using that saber, making long streaks of bright red, a further metaphor of self-harm. These outbursts always followed moments of failure, long cuts to release the anger and rage he felt against himself. He was no monster just a human struggling with balancing himself. Ben Solo wasn't just the shadow, or the dark, as he proclaims himself to be. Leia saw Ben in her womb as a band of light with a vein of darkness. And Luke went on to comfort his sister regarding that, saying, the brighter the light, the darker the shadow. Kylo failed to see that Ben Solo is his true self. He didn't have to define himself. He didn't have to prove himself, and although he bled his crystal to break the chains that he felt bound him, he undoubtedly invented the shroud of Kylo Ren to suffocate his light. And his last step to success, to victory, only led to more captivity. According to Sigmund Freud, bridges have multiple meanings. In the work New Introductory Lectures on Psychoanalysis, Freud discusses the deeper symbolic meanings of a bridge. First, it means the male organ, which unites the two parents in intercourse, but afterwards it develops further meanings which are derived from this first one, insofar as it is thanks to the male organ that we are able to come into the world at all, out of the amniotic fluid. A bridge becomes the crossing from the other world, the unborn state, the womb, to their world, life. And since men also picture death as a return to the womb, to the water, a bridge also acquires the meaning of something that leads to death. And finally, at a further remove from its original sense, it stands for transitions or changes in condition generally. 
Kylo Ren was born on that first bridge. However, his father, the origin of his birth, called to him on the second to make the turn. When the audience first encounters a bridge in the sequel trilogy, we see Kylo Ren encounter his father, Han Solo. Han, prepared to sacrifice his life, confronts his son and pleads to him to return. Ben Solo's relationship with his father is a key in understanding his true self, for he stated to Han that he was once weak and foolish like his father, so he destroyed him. Even in that scene, Kylo struggles with his master's order to kill his father. He even hands his lightsaber over to his father, symbolically himself. Yet when the darkness eclipses the sun, Kylo takes the saber and slays him through the heart. No doubt in hopes to slay the heart of his father within him. This deed, as Snoke described, split him to the bone. The bridge stays intact. The father's relationship and significance to the son stays intact. Yet the act plunges Ben into a deeper confidence with the dark, perhaps to allude to the deeper layers of Dante's Inferno. The closer you get to Satan, the darker and colder it gets. But at the top of that bridge, the Force sent hope, a call to the light once more. His dyad was the beacon, calling the way to his ascension from the pit. Kylo chased that light into a wintry forest, dueled, and then pleaded with her to let him be her teacher. He so longed for connection, for affirmation, and in this scavenger, he started to feel the warmth of the light once again. The Force split them apart, knowing that the bridge that connected them must be separated until the two could become one in intimacy of mind and spirit. Before that split, she wounded him, slicing his face open with a quick flick of her saber. It was a wound of rejection, but also a surgical wound, opening the invisible mask he wore to hide the broken boy inside. The Force connected them, forcing them to talk. As they grew together, Ray repeated to him the same words of comfort uttered by Ty and by his father. Ben was not alone, and it wasn't too late. Yet he hid in shame and further in the darkness until he came to the final bridge, that final confrontation where that hope and promise came to fruition. Ray wounded him once again in his side, then knelt before him and poured her life force into him, healing him of the fresh wounds and old scars. As Joseph Campbell said, the wound can be healed only by the weapon that delivered the wound. The wound is the wound of my passion and agony of love for this creature, and the only one who can heal me is the one who delivered the blow. On this path of discovery, Ben Solo was on the path to love. The path to know that his family did love him. The path to find his other half. The path to accept himself as he was. As Ty compelled him, be the man I know you are. The chasm created on Starkiller Base was fused together as one on the ruins of the Death Star. But Ben had more than one love in his life. He also had to heal the wound of his heart, the wound that his father gave him. Every boy, in his journey to become a man, takes an arrow in the center of his heart, in the place of his strength. Because the wound is rarely discussed and even more rarely healed, every man carries a wound, and the wound is nearly always given by his father. Finding the father is a major step in healing the hero in the monomyth. Because truly, finding the Father is to forgive the Father and to make peace with Him. On this bridge, Ben Solo finally forgave his Father, and most importantly, himself. Many times, absentee fathers leave young boys wondering, Am I enough? Am I good enough? And perhaps that is why Ben, like Ray, chased after substitute father figures to answer this question but he found a cold reply from their lips. He failed. On this bridge, Ben heard that Ray wanted his hand, not Kylo Ren's. Ben heard his father's voice speaking words of encouragement, forgiveness, and restoration. On this bridge, Ben had no place to go. 
he took that saber that housed that cracked crystal and baptized it. He had the approval of his father, not for any good or bad that he did, but because Ben Solo was simply his son, and that was good enough for Ben and good enough for his father. Ben Solo was reborn, the third symbolism Freud mentioned, one of rebirth, a new beginning, a new start, a new spirit. He had no more expectations, only hope of the ray of light that beckoned to the home of their connection. What Ty said was true. What Ty said is true. Hope never failed. Ben had the ability to turn, and when he did, he found his way into the arms of his other half, the bridge that connected two souls to one. He finally found the strength to be who he was, the strength to feel love and be loved in return.